I was there to kill him. I can still see it. Even though it was over 20 years ago, sometimes even now in my truck when I'm driving down the road, I find myself playing it back like an old movie, wondering what I could have done to change the way it ended. He was a big deer. I've killed a few that were bigger, but I've never faced one smarter. There was an old oak flat, which was a staging area, probably 10 acres wide, seven acres deep that buffered the landscape between a cornfield and a bedding area, you could only hunt it on a south wind. I had hunted that property since I was a kid, and I'd watch these staging patterns play out for decades, really. Deer would leave that bedding area, make their way into the oak flat about 30 minutes before sunset, eat acorns like hors d'oeuvres while waiting for the sun to set before they entered the corn. It was around 5.20 p.m. on a chilly evening in October. I knew that within the next 45 minutes, I'd start seeing deer emerge from the bedding area into the oak flat where I was waiting at 25 feet up an oak tree of my own. 30 minutes prior to that, I had stood up just to reduce any chance of unnecessary movement. And around 5.50 p.m. with 20 minutes of legal light left, I saw him appear from the swampy area about 75 yards to the southeast of my stand. He'd eat and walk, stop and grab an acorn, eat and walk. And he held that cadence slow and steady while walking at me the entire time. I'd intentionally hung my stand about 10 yards behind a massive white oak. And the crowding feature of that tree was that about eight feet up the base it split into two parts, almost as large as the base itself. I mean, it was a glorious tree. And in its majesty, it provided an equally glorious blocker that added a bit of cover between me and the whitetails staging for the sunset meal. At the 40-yard mark, I put my release on the string. Just keep coming, was my only thought. Once he entered the 20-yard zone, I knew that any moment now I'd draw on him. He was slightly quartering toward me, and I figured that once he cleared the split white oak, I'd have a stellar broadside shot. In fact, that white oak, because of its circumference, was going to provide me the perfect opportunity to draw on him as he went behind the split trunks. On cue, he walked behind the oak tree, and then he stopped cold. No big deal. I mean, big bucks do that. All deer do that. They stop and survey. The wind was steadily in my face. I saw him before he saw me. I was already standing up and I hadn't moved since the moment I saw him. The situation was perfect as long as I was patient. I could see him perfectly from the neck up, right between those two tree trunks. His head was framed beautifully between those split oaks. And there he stood, motionless, not even blinking. 17 steps away. He stood there, motionless, for nine minutes. Never moved once. And that was fine by me. Even if he changed directions and walked away, he'd be quartering away from me. In my mind, he was caught. It was just a matter of linear feet now. I was there to kill him. And kill him I would in just two more steps in any direction. At the 10 minute mark, that buck put that massive white oak between us and he walked straight away from me. All I could see were his antlers coming out either side of the trunk for the next 75 regressing yards. He walked back to that bedding area and the hunt was over. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10.10 10 is the verse. I was there to kill him. And what kept that buck alive was that he had no need to understand why. Something was off and he knew it. He hadn't seen it. He hadn't heard it. Yet even still, there was something looming inside him that made him quietly move away from the situation. Now, as I've played out that scenario so many times over the years, I've come to believe that what kept that buck alive was his humility. He didn't need to know why. He just left. He didn't need a reason. 
He simply removed himself from a situation that felt the slightest bit off to him. And that's why he survived. Temptation never got the best of him because he didn't need to investigate it. If you are in Christ, God has installed his spirit into your spirit. You now carry the spirit of Christ and he calls himself the Holy Spirit. And he also calls himself another name, the Counselor. And often his counsel is simply, walk away. The next time you find yourself in a situation where something is off, walk away. Temptation often leads us to want to investigate or be curious or play around or push the boundaries. Not having a need to investigate and having the discipline to walk away could be the very thing that keeps your soul from dying a brutal death. Being a missionary doesn't always mean going to a foreign country. You do the best work and the most consistent work right where you live in the circle of influence that God's already given you. Plow the field you're already standing in, so to speak. Would you be willing to share the Man Minute? Maybe not with the whole world, but just think through a list of buddies or somebody that needs a text sent to them with a link. You might be surprised at just how far sowing that seed could go for an eternal harvest.